Yo, what is up, everybody? It is Corey Jack on Marco back with season six, episode six of the Dodcast. I did have to go check that. I started recording this once and then I forgot what episode it was, so this is the second take, all right? Uh, we're doing this thing early in the morning today. It's going to be a weird episode because, frankly, there's a lot of matches missing. So, if ever there was a time for this to be under an hour, I, I think today's the day. Um, we got a recap armory, which I think only like half the matches got played. We haven't played our armory match. Uh, I know there's multiple matches getting played in the afternoon on Sunday. This Sunday is going to be great for me casting. Uh, we got... Let me... Because I don't want to speak out of turn here on exactly what games are going on. Hold on, I'm going to turn this off real quick. Real quick. All right, so. Where are we here? All right, October 20th. In case anyone missed it, I was very wrong in the Dodcast last week when I kept saying be here at 3 and 4 Eastern on Sunday because we're doing... These crazy silver matches, yeah, well, I'm bad at reading in these different time formats, as as you may be aware. So it's actually this weekend that those matches are. So we have the silver match of the week, SEC and No Pussy, at 3 Eastern, followed by the silver match of the week again, No Pussy versus Clan X. Uh, could potentially be a battle of undefeated teams. Uh, Clan X also is playing at 3 p.m. versus Expired. We're going to do the SEC No Pussy game, so maybe someone else can cast that game. Uh, I believe there was another 4 o'clock game as well. Yeah, Expired versus No Go. Damn. I feel bad because I, I... I mean, then again, to be fair, maybe it's a good thing I didn't cast the No Go game because they ended up winning, and I probably would have cursed them even further. So maybe, you know, we'll test that theory this weekend and see how it goes. Um, but yeah, and then we got a 5 o'clock match over versus Icy Hot. Ah! Lennon, 3, 4, and 5 this weekend are just bonkers matches back to back to back. Uh, clear your schedule for the afternoon. Fuck football. Football is going to be happening millions of other times, all right? These are important DOD matches. These are fewer and further between. And then um, we play our match at 9. And then uh, after that, I'm going to try to do, like, it'll probably just be the second half of this game. Red Shirts versus Argentino style. And then at 10, we got another good silver match here. A uh, DOD team versus on-time arrivals. Those are on Lenin. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there is... A very full day of casting uh, to be done on Sunday. I don't see any of the other gold matches scheduled yet. Am I missing something maybe? No, it doesn't look like it. All right, so maybe uh, the Here to Frag versus, I guess it would be Dice game will get scheduled for, uh, for another time that I can cast. That would be sick. So, um, yeah, this episode should be relatively short and relative is the key term here because nothing is short with me uh, except my temper so uh we don't have a frag of the week yet this week pfft, mainly because most of the matches haven't been played i believe at least the last i saw quirks was going to try to do it let me see if we can see any sort of an update oh i didn't i didn't even see this post yet all right, so I know I know Quirks was at least talking about wanting to do the Frag of the Week somewhere. Where is it? Hmm, hmm. I actually haven't seen this. Well, you know, you know what? We got some time to watch some stuff, so I want to watch this clip here. I mean, huh. I remember. Oh, shit, I didn't know Karate had a YouTube channel. Did he make this? Oh, no. Good song choice. I mean, he certainly learned how to do cam path if he made this. What resolution is this in? 4K. 
So that we don't have a frag of the week. We're just going to watch Drew dominating on Armory as he... You know, do we call this the Crawd Rod? It's either the Crawd or the Bees at this point. This might just be all of his kills in the, in the half. I think he had like 47 or 48. Correct me if I'm wrong. Goose Australia, I forgot they were tagged that. I don't think I casted this game. I think I was just watching it as a spectator. Wow, that's some broken... D oh, wait, you guys can't see this right now. Shit. God damn it. God damn it, I'm a fucking idiot. Hold on. Hold on. We're gonna restart that. We're gonna restart that. There we go. There we go. This this is much better. So just take everything I said in the previous 30 seconds and, and pretend as if this next 30 seconds is what you were seeing and not just Discord. And now you can see what I was referring to. I was seeing him having a cam path in there. And then you can see the, the broken DoD that I was referring to as well. It's not yet. I believe it's after the fifth kill. It should have been a sixth kill. He just got robbed. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming up in this area. Shooting a guy for like a full bar clip in the back. And I think like one bullet hits. Yeah, it's right here, I believe. No, it's not that. Is it? No, that wasn't what it was, I don't think. No, no, it's here. It's right here. It's right here. Look at that. Broken DOD. Alright, now we're caught up on, on reality. Of course, good team play by Goose there. Drew goes to reload. Hopper is there waiting for the guy to peek on the reload. Sound cue. Ooh. A CK nade there by Matt. Ho ho ho! Yo, that guy got some air. Oh, wow. 11 and 2. I mean, just... Endless, endless kills. This serving is our Frag of the Week for the day. Uh, maybe next week we'll have a double Frag of the Week to do on the Dodcast. 14 and 5. Cap out. Double kill. Oh, dead nade. Man, there was just no answer for him in this game at all. He was thoroughly ingrained in the anus. Just up their asses. Ho, 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 ho. I, I, wait, was it this game? The shot that I'm thinking of? There's one shot I remember very vividly, but I, I feel like I was casting when I saw that shot, so now I'm not sure it's in this game. Maybe it was just a different armory game. Because I don't think I got to cast this. Oh, wait, did I end up casting like, just the third map, maybe? Or, like, the end? I Yeah, I think I casted, like, a map and a half. Big cap out there. 3 to 1, 27 and 9, and this is probably, like, you know, less than 10 minutes into the half. Crazy. Ooh. A little bit of DOD robbery there again. Notice, he is never dropping the bar for a car either. Crawd would not be affected by uh, a change to the game where he couldn't pick up enemy guns. I mean, maybe on Axe's side, because most heavies are going to drop the fucking STG to pick up a bar. But on Allied side, he's keeping that bar. How the fuck does that nade blow his helmet off? It's a mile away. And people laugh when I joke about interp grenades.
If you don't see how nades can interp you, then you haven't been paying very close attention. Your hitboxes are still subject to lag compensation, and nades interact with your hitboxes. Oh, almost got around the corner. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh ho, my god, what are you going to do against that? There's nothing. I feel like the shot that I remember is coming up pretty soon. Here it is. No? Yes. Oh, nice. I was? This has got to be it right here. Yeah, there it is. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, now, now I, I'm, I was kind of confused for a second about whether or not I had casted this. I was right that I just got in for like the second half of Saints and Armory. I was certain that I had been casting the game that that shot happened in, but then I was like, did I not cast the finals? I feel like, did we maybe, we might have been like playing our finals game right before this. And by the time we were done, it was most of the, 52, okay, so I was actually wrong. I said it was like 47 or 48, but it was 52 bonkers fucking game by Crawd there. All right, so that's, I, I, I guess technically I've already spent more time, more time on this than I normally do on the Frag of the Week, but it's fine. It's mostly my own fault. All right, so let's start recapping what we can recap. This should be a shorter segment this time around, uh, just because there's not a whole lot of matches that got played. All right. Is that, is that armor? No, it looks like Anju. Yeah, it's on you. All right. That game got played first. Didn't get to cast that. Didn't get to cast that. I did get to cast that. Didn't get to cast that. Did it only end up being one game I casted? There was just, like, no games going on, I think, for the most part. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I didn't cast in the afternoon. There was no afternoon games that day. It wasn't until the Dice versus Clinic game. Which I thought was the only game because the the other this game was scheduled for nine. Uh so I'd like gotten off to do other shit and then Darren had messaged me saying like they hadn't even gone live yet at like nine fifty. So it turns out if I'd have known if I'd have known that was gonna happen, I could have casted that game. But regardless, let's just I didn't get to see most of these games. I only got to see one of them. So there's going to be a lot of speculation. Let's start off with the curse-breaking no-go here. 231-85 to over Style Argentino. Um, did I did I uncurse them by not predicting? I mean, I think I still predicted them to win this game, though. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's see. What are the halves here? Do we see a GG? That's the GG. So, this is first half. Axis side for no-go, 133-41. to uh, frags a differential of about plus 43 for no go there. Uh, Argentino style, Empy with a really nice half there in a tough half. 31 and 24, 26 for Pocho, uh, 22 for Proxy, 16 apiece for Lucho and Dukas, and 18 for Dende. And as alluded to in that prediction, Darren, 42 kills on Axis side sniping armory uh he is excellent at this map we saw it multiple times both in the finals uh the, the game that we were just watching crowd play and then even i think in the semis it was uh against Saab that he was sniping against nightmare and doing a ridiculous job i i could be wrong about the timing on the other game that he played but I do remember him sniping against Nightmare and having a great game, and numerous other times seeing him snipe Armory with great success. Uh, Kush had 34 kills as well. Rye Guy on the heavy with 30. 27 for Schmaltz. Uh, he was also on a heavy. 22 for Deidro and 17 for Blue. And on to the second half, Allied side, 98 to 44. Actually a closer half. Uh, which is always interesting to see, right? When it's like the inverse of what you'd expect based on the, the sides they're playing. 157 to 137 were the kills in favor of no-go. Dukas with 30 this time, top fragging for Argentino style, followed closely by MP, who just had a great game all around. 60 kills, of course. Uh, 
you know what to expect with MP. He's going to be great. Pocho with 27, 23 for Proxy, 16 for Lucho, 12 for Dende, and once again, Darren. Wow, he had nearly 80 kills overall here with under 30 deaths. Or no, it was exactly 30 deaths. Exactly 30 deaths. Crazy. He almost ended up 3 to 1. He had 36 and 17 here on Allies. Top frag by 7 over the next closest, which was Schmaltz on the bar. 29, 28 for Deidro, 24 for Kush, 21 for Blue, and 19 for Ryan. And yeah, no go. They get on the board. Sometimes that's all it takes, right? Just got to get the ball rolling. Um, it was a tough, tough first few weeks for no go, but they got a lot of talent on that team. It's just a matter of them clicking once and for all, and you will start to see them get more and more wins like this. For Style Argentino, I, I really, with them, it's it's always just down to how many of like their big dogs they have playing, right? Uh, and, and the map as well. Like I think this is kind of a tough map just for the style of play for like the best players on the team. It, it's a tough map for fucking, like I suck at this map. Um, so I understand how that goes, but Argentino style has a lot of potential on that team. It's just a matter of, of what six they can get out there, what the map and matchup is and stuff. They're going to be fine. Um, that's a, a team that you don't want to run into come playoff time. Uh, cause when all of a sudden they've got their fully fleshed out lineup and, and everything's starting to come together, you're going to have a whole different beast coming at you and you're not going to really have any clue what to expect at that point so they too will be fine uh just a matter of continuing to evolve as the season goes on so big w there for no go armory in the books for them uh next up we've got on time arrivals versus the wicked so 419 to 132 we've actually got i, I love that bullet does this <laughs> um it's very helpful for me uh, he went into the HLTVs to get the screenshots. Now, I know that sometimes the HLTV can get a little glitchy on screenshots, so I'm guessing that he double-checks with his own POV screenshots when he can. Yeah, you can see they, they match up there. But the nice bonus with the HLTV screenshots is getting to see everybody's class, so there's no question like, maybe this guy on the other team played this class. I don't fucking know. And I spend an extra minute speculating about that. So, uh, I'm going to assume that the, yeah, he says straight up first half screenshot. All right, so first half here, 156 to 55 for on-time rivals on their Axis side, plus 23 on the frag total. Um, on the Wicked side, Fusa with 27, AZ with 27, Jiraiya with 25, uh, Zaps with 20, 15 for Man, 13 for Ryan, and for On Time Arrivals, Jesus Christ, Ben, insane, 38 and 19, uh, just another crazy half for him, uh, I'm curious to, I can, well, it's right there, he, had, he ended up with 65 kills total, um, but yeah, 28 kills for Cody as well, of course, Pro Star, uh, Eric, wow, Scat getting in uh, a match for the first time this season, on old reliable sniper class for him, 25 and 18, 22 for Bobby, 21 for Bullet, 16 for Epion, and then on the second half, uh, as you can see, this the, didn't display the score correctly, but 263 to 77 in favor of on-time arrivals, plus 28 in the kill totals there. Um, Manned, wow, 30 kills that half on Axis side, that's impressive, Axis side, I feel, I mean, I guess both halves, it kind of depends on, on what your aim style is, which, which half is going to be more convenient for you, sniping, it's a lot of flicking around on Allied side, because, you know, you're in the loft, you're looking at the opposing loft, bottom right, bottom left, and they can come out the arch, and there's also rope, um, they could potentially be pushed up heavy route to be bottom right, right in front of you. And then if they get up onto the bridge, you got the archway over here. You got the back double box. You got the sandbag. You got the actual cap zone where there's another box. Like, it's a lot of flicky aim. It's not really like other loft-based maps where it's like you're just zoned in on one of two areas. And, like, you have a lot of time to really focus on, like, oh, there's a guy coming balcony on Railroad 2 on Axis side. Oh, I can stop looking this direction and look at balcony on this map a lot of it is just like i'm i'm aiming somewhere between these five areas and i'm relying on reaction time and flicking uh so i'm not surprised 
uh, to see, you know, like, you see someone like Stealth or Carpenter or Nick uh, on their allied side be, being able to put up numbers that are just really difficult to duplicate for, like, just a, a sniper who doesn't play like that in particular. Uh, but on Axis side, it's a lot more straightforward. Um, which is, that's where Mand really thrives, like in the straight-up sniper battles, where it's a little more predictable. You don't have to, because, like, I mean, he's, you're dealing with 133 ping as well. Sniping, scoping in, that part sucks. Uh, with 133 ping, there's that little bit of a delay on the scope. It's a lot harder to get into this, like, pinpoint precision, like, I'm quick peeking, and this guy's peeking this other angle that I'm not expecting. Um, but in a situation like this... These are the halves where Mad will just grind you down to a nub on the sniper rifle. Uh, it is really tough to deal with because his aim is so good and his like understanding of angles and the class in general. Uh, so yeah, I'm not surprised that Axis side went much better for him here. You're not going to see Mand have two bad halves in a game ever. He's too consistently good sniping for that shit to happen. Uh, 26 for Fusa as well. 21 for AZ, 18 for Jiraiya, 14 for Ryan, and 13 for Zaps. And for on-time arrivals, Cody with 35 there. So he ended up... How many did he have on Axis side? Yeah, 28. He ended up with 60 kills, for sure. 63, that is. Um, and then 27 apiece for Eric and for Ben. Uh, 23 for Bullet. 19 apiece for Epion and Bobby. And a big win there for on-time arrivals. Um, you know, with the Wicked's, again, it's kind of the same thing as Style Argentino, where they're they're just slowly figuring things out. Um, you know, inconsistent lineups as well is always something that's tough to deal with. Uh, the same thing is happening on 3H right now. Like, you just can never get the, the flow with each other until you get to that point where either the lineup gets more consistent or there's just been so much DOD played with everybody that it starts to level out in terms of, of that like cohesion as a unit. Um, but on time arrivals continue to look great this season. Uh, you know, they are a big time dark horse to be able to, to knock somebody out of the silver eight playoffs unexpectedly. Right. You don't want to run into this team in playoffs at all. Uh, uh, regardless of what team you are, whether you're SEC, No Pussy, Clan X, uh, it just any of those teams could easily end up running into trouble against on time arrivals on the right day, on the right maps. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how things go moving forward. Uh, what's the last silver game we got here? Red shirts. That's right. Red shirts and a DOD team. So, this was a fucking close game from what I understand uh all in all again I I didn't this is another one of those games that I would have really liked to cast uh unfortunately I did not get to but 306 to 209 red shirts with the dub in the end um I believe it was like a late cap out that ended up breaking through and and putting the stamp on this one I could be wrong I forget who it was somebody somebody kind of gave me like a breakdown of what went down in this game but you know, I can only really, I, I didn't see it with my own two eyes, so I can't say anything for sure. Uh, I know in the predictions, this was like very much a, a coin flip. I don't even remember who I picked. I think I literally like flipped this as if it was a coin and whoever it came up with was who I said. Um, but in half one, a DOD team gets out to the lead here, 147 to 59. Uh, so that's a great start right off the bat. Plus what, uh, 88? 88 point lead at the half. Uh, red shirts actually had more frags, which is kind of crazy. In, in a game, in a in a half where you know what amounts to two capouts, they're down by. I guess a lot of that can be coming on defense, right? There are instances where these kind of things can happen. Um, but yeah, that's actually pretty rare. Um, of course, on a DoD team side, Crawd with 37 kills. This is you know just set your fucking watch to it. Um, 25 for Mike there, 24 for G, 19, yeah, 19 for Quarter, 17 for Purdy, and 16 for Nick, and then on the red shirt side, Chi with 36 on the car, Milo with 35 on the sniper, Colin with 28 on a heavy, 
Meep with 26 on the car, 17 for Red Dog on a heavy, and 13 for Kyle on the Unter. So they had a little bit of a comeback to make here, obviously, down by 88. Um, but Red Shirts, they got the right guys to keep the team, you know, really like within themselves, not feel like, oh, this is a fucking a task we have to we have to pull off here. And sure enough, they kept it together, going into the stronger side there. Uh, 247 to 62, so 185 points they ended up, so that's how they ended up with like a 90 point win. Uh, 169 to 136, so plus 33 on the kill totals, uh, for a DOD team. 36, again, for Crod, 73 kills for Crod. Um, hmm. You know, I'm starting to second guess this whole thing about call, what, what, calling that side B's. I think now, looking at this, Crawd might actually have, like, the highest kills per half uh, of anybody on Armory, period, if I had to guess. But certainly, like, just heavy-wise in particular, that's wild. Like, thinking about, at le there's at least three Armory games that I can think of between this one, the finals, and then another game uh, that he had with Goose, where he had 70 or more kills total. Uh, bordering on 90 kills in the case of the finals last season. So, maybe that side should be called Crod? Okay, is there a way to combine Crod? Crees? Crees? Broad? You can call it Broad. Eh, we'll come up with something. Uh, anyways, 28 for Mike, a good half there on the car as well. Good to see Gandhi, you know, when, when Mike's playing, he is going to be as reliable a rifle as there is in the game. Uh, it's just a fact. It's been that way for a long time. Uh, 24 for three-sided quarter, 19 for G, 15 for Kevin, and 14 for Nick. And then on the redshirt side, Milo continuing to prove that this guy is a sniper. 40 and 17 sniping allied side there, which, as I said, is, is a bit of a tougher one mechanically to deal with often. Certainly in my opinion. You know, it's just... I guess it... it I'm not going to get back into the fucking sniping tactical fucking discussion with myself here, but yeah, you know, I, I'm saying allied side is tougher mechanically. I know the last match I played on Armory, I got significantly wrecked on my axis side compared to allied side. I think it favors angle wise on allied side, but if you don't have good communication coming from your teammates on allied side, you can get just shit stomped. Because they can be coming from so many different places. If you have no idea where they're coming from, and those opposing rifles and sniper are, like, they know that you're in loft and they just start spamming you, like, you're going to just get spammed down over and over again. You know, because you got kind of got to take the fight to them in a lot of cases, or else you will just get shot in the head through the wall. Uh, and then on Axis, you could also get shot in the head through the wall with semi-automatic rifles. Uh, which is a whole other problem to have to deal with. Like, they may have less spots to come from, but there's that really favorable, like, sliver peak angle from the docks that can be problematic. And then the fact that you can have, like, 30 Garand bullets being shot at you in a five-second span through the wall. Uh, but impressive, a 40-kill half under any circumstances, let alone for a guy who isn't a sniper historically, on a pretty tough half there. So, well done to Milo. 32 for Chi, of course. 28 for Colin. 27 for Red Dog, 24 for Meep, 18 for Alapex, and yeah, Red Shirts, another big win against a tough, tough team and a DoD team there. Um, you know, a DoD team is, a, again, another dark horse uh, in the Silver Division, It, regardless of what playoff bracket, because, like, I, I have to look at what the standings are looking like right now. Let me see. I know you guys can't see the standings exactly, but... One, two, three, four. So yeah, right now a DoD team is pretty firmly in the last playoff spot for Silver A. I mean, they got to be doing six and four, I would assume, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It goes no pussy clan X, both undefeated. Red shirts four and one. SEC three and one. On time three and two. DoD team two and three. Uh, that's a fucking tough bracket, man. Anybody can beat anybody in that bracket, uh, depending on the matchup, the week. Who shows up, you know, like, Silver is a, a doggy dog world, as always, right? Um, but yeah, a uh, DoD team, another team that I think flying under the radar right now, just because they're not, like, up there in the first two or three seeds, uh, but you don't want to run into them in the playoffs. 
And for red shirts, obviously you've got like the the three headed monster there of Colin and Milo and Chi, uh, but they are continuing to all like just gel together as a unit where you're just seeing more and more consistent performance across the board from this team. And, you know, who better to to kind of like bring that team together? You, you can't ask for three really better players for this exact scenario where it's kind of like the team got thrown together. Uh, you know, like I, I forget what the exact circumstances were, but it was kind of like Bandits was going to reform and then it kind of didn't. You know, Chi was still looking for a team. It just kind of like worked out that this six ended up getting put together. They only have, what, seven rostered players at this point, I believe. Where are they? Red shirts, red shirts, red shirts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have eight now because Big Bird's on the team. Uh, but nonetheless, point remains the same. Uh, these guys are showing up consistently and playing together and learning each other and one another's tendencies. Uh, and they're, they're all smart DOD players who understand how to win the game. So, you know, another team as evident by week one, they took out SEC, who still is one of the big favorites in the division. So if they can beat SEC. They can definitely beat Clan X. They can definitely beat No Pussy. Again, dog eat dog world and silver. Uh, I believe that does it for the silver recap. Yes, um, we've got okay. We've got two gold games to recap here. This one happened a little bit before all the other games that week. So this is icy hot versus here to frag three fifty nine to ninety eight. Icy hot took this one. Uh, this was a very fucking fun game to cast. It started off with here to frag capping out. Um, this game, I it looked, and this actually happened, I think, in, was it week one or week two rail yard? Um, Here to Frag just had a crazy, crazy start. And they're very capable of doing that anytime, right? Now, I don't even just mean, like, the, the start. They're very capable of just whooping your ass and capping out on you anytime because of how good every one of their players are individually. Uh, and it's shown against the best team in the game right now. Um they were able to take commanding control of this match right off the bat. Blackhawk was like fucking 10 and 0 at that point on the heavy. Uh, everything was coming up here to frag. But after that cap out, it was like, you know, that activated Icy Hot to be like, yeah, no, we're, we need to return fire right now. Um, so it ended up 130 to 86 on this side, the Axis side for Icy Hot, plus 16 in the kills. Icy Hot capped back immediately. Um, I believe it was, was it like two and a half minutes for here to frag to cap, I believe. And then like literally just the minimum amount of time that you can run from one side of the map to the other. That's how long it took Icy out to cap. Like they just ran out, killed the entire team, capped the flags as quickly as you can. And then the game was reset and it was just a tie game again. Crazy shit to see the response by Icy out. And then they got another cap as well. Uh, Pretty much locked the game down from there, but here to frag did not go down easy, which you love to see, right? You don't, it's tough, you know, and as an underdog in a matchup, especially against a team like Icy Hot, it's tough to keep the fighting spirit going when they do something like that, where like you get the momentum and they just fucking rip it back from your cold, dead fingers uh, in an instant. It's tough to keep going, but here to frag did keep putting up a fight. Um, so, for here to frag, 25 apiece for Justin, for Cam, and for Blackhawk. Uh, 21 for Mike. 20 apiece for Stark and Jared. And for Icy Hot, Ben with 33. On the Sniper, of course. 28 for William. 24 apiece for Sean and Jesse. 23 for Justin. And 20 for Hopper in the lineup this week. Um, which, you know, Hopper, I know, was like nervous about playing this match. Uh, getting in there for Icy Hot. But he played really, really well. Um, and then second half here, 229 to 12, you know, uh, it's an allied sided map and Icy Hot made the most of that allied half, uh, plus 58 in the kills. Didn't quite get to that like near 200 mark, but 178 is like, you know, that next tier down when it comes to having a dominant half, uh, 24 kills a piece for Mike and for Justin, 21 for Jared, 19 for Cam and Blackhawk, 13 for Stark and on the Icy Hot side, 36 for Sean on the Grand. I mean, they were just hitting fucking insane shots all over the place. 
pretty much whoever you watched in this half, first of all, none of them went negative, which is always, like, fun to see, right? It's one of those nice uniform halves where everyone is positive. Uh, Justin is 25 and 25. So not everyone is pot, but everyone's even at bare minimum. Um, but yeah, these guys were just hitting crazy fucking shots all over the place. Movie clip central for them. Uh, 36 for Sean, 35 for Ben, 31 for Jesse, 26 for Hopper, 25 for William, 25 for Justin. Just a, a fucking clinical half there for Icy Hot. Uh, no mistakes made. Uh, it, it was just, it was crazy to watch. Just boom, respawn, go kill four people, boom, respawn, go kill four people, cap out, respawn, go kill four people. Uh, they were really clicking on all cylinders in this half. And while using Hopper, who is a ringer from another team, right, that's not even a rostered player for them. So scary, scary things from Icy Hot. They didn't even have bees on this map. So... Uh, as everyone else in gold, you hate to see it, right? You don't want to see Icy Hot looking like that well-oiled machine. Again, you're hoping to see some sort of a kink in that armor as the season goes on. Uh, we're at the halfway mark, effectively, right now, except for, for 3H, because we're still a map behind everybody else, which is unfortunate. Um, and I'm guessing we're not playing that this weekend, either, because I know... It seems just as unlikely that we have more than, like, three people available in the afternoon. So, I don't know when the game against Silver will get played. Uh, hopefully soon. Hopefully while I'm in Buffalo so I can be playing on my computer. Uh, so I can have more than 100 FPS. But, yeah, Icy Hot just looking like Icy Hot, as you'd expect. And here to frag again, showing how much potential and what their ceiling is with the way that they came out flying to start that game. It's just a matter of taking those, like, sequences and stringing them together throughout more of the match. You're never going to see that for a whole match, because that's just insane. Nobody's ever done that in, like, a, the top levels of competition in DoD. It just doesn't happen. But, you know, being able to piece together sequences like that a few more times, and then, like, the intangibles that come after situations like that, where you get the cap, and rather than press straight forward and, like, we're going to cap again, you need to be ready for the fact that the response from the other team might be exactly that. Maybe bait them into you or something, you know? Like, sometimes it's just, it's a matter of knowing when to break and when to accelerate, right? Uh, which is, it's a tough balance to find. And sometimes you can break at the wrong time and end up just sitting back, waiting for your own inevitable demise. And sometimes you can put your foot to the pedal a little bit too too hard and end up walking yourself straight into the pits of hell. Um which is, that's more often the problem, I think. To, more often you see teams uh, have death by aggression rather than death by passivity, right? You know, that's, that's why you see newer teams with the constant team wipes happening. Because I, I think in those cases, you just, people, the, the, the team is newer, and so nobody's really sure, like, eh, do, I need, do I need to be the guy to go take space? Do I need to be the guy to go get that? extra frag do i need to be the guy who gets that opening pick uh and it's just people are pressing a little too hard as opposed to being a little too safe right i think it's more forgiving obviously being a little too passive than it is being a little too aggressive or way too aggressive in some cases um but yeah big big win again for icy hot and the last recap game dice and clinic uh, this game watching dice in this game was just fucking wild man they looked like a world beater, you know, um, which is not surprising. It's just against clinic, right? I, I thought this game was going to come down to like within a cap and it looked like it at first. It was another instance here where clinic kind of came out and laid down the pace on them at first. Um, but once dice got into this match, there was no getting them back out of it. Uh, which is kind of, that's, that's what you expect from dice now, right? If you've played dice, or watch dice at all this season. Once they get rolling, like you have, you maybe have an opportunity at the start of the game to, to kind of establish the the pacing that you want to establish or take control of the game. But if you let them back in the game, uh, you're done. You're pretty much done for at that point. You need to keep them on their heels perpetually. Because uh, if they're playing their game, you will lose, and you will lose handily. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. The only team that's been able to 
kind of go blow for blow with dice this season was icy hot in that solitude game and even then it kind of came down to like basically the last two minutes of the game i think you know just a battle for double cap on a generally very flawed map uh i, I look forward to seeing dice the dicey hot game again on uh i believe it's anzio am i wrong yeah anzio it's got to be anzio because icy hot plays uh over on lennon in my head it was like it's either lennon or anzio all right, so 341 to 70 was the score here. These halves are in the correct order. First off, Kevin just had a crazy game. Uh, looked absolutely unkillable. Uh, what did he have? He had 37 and 35 for 72. Uh, but let me go one by one here. 37 for Stealth on Axis side. Uh, I think at one point he was like 16 and 3 or something like that. Uh, just nuts. Uh, 31 for Alex. He too had a fucking crazy game. He had a ridiculous clip on Allied side where he got like, I think it was either, it was definitely four kills. I think three of them were crowd shop kills, and then the fourth one was just like a normal car kill. <laughs> You know, he just, like, peaked and dominated a guy. But, like, the first three, I'm pretty sure, were crowd shop kills. And then he picked up a car and got a fourth kill on a guy. Just a ridiculous clip. Uh, 29 for Asani. He had a slow start. And in, with guys who were, you know, newer in, at the top of the scene, it can be tough when you have a slow start to ever get back in the game. And Asani showed, uh, you know, that he has no problem doing so. Because, especially with the car, man, when you get off to a slow start with the car, it just... You're, it's so tempting to drop it because you feel like, ah, man, maybe I'm wasting the car. Maybe someone else can do more with this. Maybe I should pick up an Unter, you know, give myself more of a chance to get the kill rather than just the one bullet. Asani kept grinding away, and uh, he made the most of it there. Like, I don't remember what the exact score situation was, but throughout the last 10 minutes, he was consistently getting multi-kills. Just every single life, he was getting multi-kills and kept grinding away at that score. Uh, 27 for Ryan on the STG. He also had some really, really big moments on the heavy route where it looked like Clinic was wrestling back some control, and Ryan was the only guy there. At one point, just Ryan and Asani were left alive, one on each side of the map, and I believe they killed five out of six, maybe even all six, when it looked like Clinic was was 100% going to take control of the entire map right then and there, because it was basically three on one on both halves of the map. But, uh, you know, they pretty much the guys that you want alive in that situation, right? Uh, and uh, it was 27 on Ryan, 21 on Matt, and 20 on Paul. And on the clinic side, Vic and Tom with 28. The heavies did a really good job. They, they did their job. It's just that eventually dice, man, once they get going, it's just a steady stream of, like, basically uh, what, any three out of the six players on dice getting like six kills between them just and then they die and then the, the next three come in and they get six kills uh just reinforcement wave after reinforcement wave of getting shit on uh scott who had a really really ridiculous start like i think he was seven and one off the first life like he ended up the last alive and got like four or five grand kills um but yeah, then things just slowly kind of started to un unravel from that point. I mean, this half overall, I think it was like the first 14, 15 minutes. It was very back and forth, very even. Clinic, I think, was winning for a good chunk of it. But then Dice got both both halves of the map under control. And they, they were very close to capping out so many times. Like, it was just defense mode for Clinic, having to hold their last flag desperately trying to break out it's such a stressful thing they didn't break at all um, which is impressive in and of itself uh, that map can be fucking tough to hold on allied side at the last flag because it's just the flag is out in the middle of nowhere your spawn is right there and there's just two fucking like rangy choke points for them to come out and just take aim duels with you you know and they can overwhelm you with numbers doing the same it's just it's a very stressful hold and clinic managed to do so uh, and keep it within range at least uh, Carpenter with 24, uh, 21 on Sam, and 19 for Insom. And then on to the second half, uh, Dice continued the momentum here. It, it was just really crazy to watch. They looked obscene in the ways that they were getting kills and the way that they were just kind of establishing dominance from start to finish on this half. Uh, they almost broke 200, 192 you can see there. 
Uh, it was a 250, was it 6 or 8? Looks like 6. 256 to 14. Um, so a 244-point victory on that half. Um, Paul had 42. I mean, he was just everywhere. Everywhere. Getting, I don't even know how many kills at a time. It was a lot of kills all the time, basically. Uh, it looked like Stealth would just kind of like cruise the top fragging that half. Uh, and, and Paul very convincingly ended up top fragging. He was dominating with the bar. Um, Kevin did have 35 still. And then Alex and Asani with 32 apiece on the Garands. Uh, Ryan at 29 on the other bar. And Matt with not a whole lot of kills left to, to come his way. Because Dice was just, just, it was like the fucking meat grinder, right? Just slowly pushing out the pieces. Um, absolutely ridiculous half by Dice there. As good a half as you're going to see on any map, uh, on any side, period. Uh, looked unbeatable unbeatable in the way that they play this half. Uh, I would love to see the allied side of DICE from this game up against the allied side of Icy Hot from their game because they both, like, that's some fucking premier DOD right there, the way that those two teams approached and executed their allied sides on Armory. Uh, really crazy stuff. Uh, and then on Clinic, Insom had 31 and Scott had 30. The cars, they were, they were putting up the numbers, right? Uh... It's just that there was just so much going on. Like, you know, at that point, you're going to die over and over again. You're going to die. There's nothing you can do about it. When the other team is having a game like that, it's just it, these guys were hitting insane shots on clinic, too. It was just it just didn't matter. Uh, that's the way it goes sometimes in, in a team game like this. It's just the the other unit as a whole was just dominating. Um, 27 for Vic. 20 for Carp, 14 for Sam, 13 for Tom. Uh, you know, huge, huge win here for Dice. And I think leading into the game, it was kind of like whoever wins this game, kind of like leapfrogs even more into that these are the teams category, right? And Dice made a huge statement here. It, obviously, it already kind of looked like those were the two teams, Dice and Icy Hat. Just looking at the results of every game, you can see oh, Dice has only lost to Icy Hat. And Icy Hot has only had one close game, and it was with Dice. Uh, it, it, the writing was on the wall already, but this just kind of drives that point home even more. Um, a scary, scary team, man. And and you gotta favor that being the finals matchup. Over still big time in the picture. Um, with Over, it's just kind of always a question of what six do they have showing up. That's really the biggest question mark with over when it comes down to it. And then there are some maps that they are stronger on than others still at this point. Uh, Dice has a very deep map pool, though, right? Uh, Going to be interesting to see because now we're getting into, like, the Railroad, Lennon, Anzio portion of the season. Gonna, I'm, I'm curious just to see how Dice is going to perform. Like, are these maps going to be big strong points for them? Uh, I, I don't expect them to, like, lose outside of to Icy Hot. Uh who do they play? Let me just check who it is that they're playing on each map. So, Lennon, they've got here to frag. They've got us on Thunder. Uh, Icy Hot on Anzio, as we said. And then over on Saints. That'll be an interesting one. Uh, that's an interesting matchup for sure. Uh, Nick Patton versus Stealth, or Nightmare versus Stealth, potential sniper matchup on Saints. And then Clinic on Railroad 2 is, is an interesting one as well. I think Clinic matches up a lot better with Dice on a Railroad 2 than Armory. Um, so that game, I think, will be a lot closer than the way the Armory game went. Um, still got a favor Dice in, in all these games, right? Besides the ICAC game, where it's a lot more of a coin flip. But uh, on the Clinic side of things, you know, there's their Clinic, right? This is not going to phase them. They will be back. And they will be strong. This is just its one of those tough games. Like, we had the same thing happen to us against Bandits last season. We got absolutely shit-stomped on Armory by them. Um, you just got to kind of put it in the rear view. Move on. It is what it is. The regular season is really just for seeding. Put it out of your mind. Just keep, you know, trying to sharpen things up and peak at the right time for when the BO3s come to pass in the playoffs. Uh, and yeah, that's it for the recap. Where are we at here? I hate my life. How do... How? Fuck. Okay. Predictions. Idiot. 
Okay, what do we got in the... We got Clan X and No Pussy. That's the match of the week, right? That's the match of the week, man. Uh, Alright. Let's start it off here with red shirts in Argentino style. So, on the Argentino style side of things, we had Dukas, Dende, Proxy, Empi, Lucho, and Pocho was the lineup last week. Obviously, lots of other guys here that you could see pop into the game, um, but that, that was the lineup they had last week. And then on the red shirt side, pretty consistently, it's been Alapex, Timo, Meep, Red Dog, Milo, and Chi. Um, we got some Lennon action now, right? This is uh, a lot more straightforward of a map. A lot more, a lot less question marks about like, how's this going to go? How's that going to go? What needs to be done in this area? You know, are there any weird things people can do? You pretty much know what, what you're going to expect on this map now. On the red shirt side of things here, right? Milo, obviously sniping, stuck going long. Not fun for anyone to be stuck going long in this map, especially sniping, because there's not a whole lot to do. There's just not. Um, I, I speculated on Anju. Maybe he'll like pick up an Unter on Axis side, stuff like that. He didn't. Um, I'm guessing he'll just keep the sniper continuously and find a way to get kills with it, because you're not going to keep Milo down. He's still going to get his. Um, but Red Shirt's able to have, you know, Milo at long, Colin in apartments, Chi on well. You know, a good way to be able to divide, like, the, the big three that they've got there. And then great support roles on each part of the map. Um, for Style Argentino, uh, I think this is a stronger map for them. You know, uh, if there was a map that, sh that they, you know, if you're them and you want a chance to play against one of the better teams on This Is The One... Uh, I think that they have a pretty good chance here to... Because, like, right, it's, this map, it's not as much, like, whoever caps the most on allied side wins, but it's still pretty allied-sided. Um, you know, if their bars can dominate apartments and the Garands can can at least make well a 50-50, um, they can keep this thing close or have potentially the chance to win. Um, it's just, you can't, you know, I'm not, I can't predict against red shirts here. I just, you, you gotta love the players that they have on each individual route. You know, you know, you can rely on them to make sure that their area of the map never gets out of control. Like they might lose the cap that's on that side of the map, but it will never get to the point where it's just like, Oh my God, we're just dying here over and over again. And they're just continuously streaming through blue room. There's or connector or, you know, long steps, or apartments, or whatever, like, they will always have an answer for these situations, and will understand how to best, you know, divvy up where they need to go in, in certain situations, when they're locked down at a last flag, what they need to do to get out of it, um, so, you know, you gotta go with red shirts here, but I, I expect a, a strong showing out of Style Argentino on this map, and all the maps going forward, I would say, really, uh, I think these are are much more favorable maps and matchups for that team uh, in the back half of the season. Um, it's just red shirts, one of the clear, you know, top four teams, five teams in the silver division. Uh, moving on over, we've got no, not that one. Uh, no go versus expired. I'm gonna try not to jinx anybody here. Gonna try. Uh, so for expired, generally you got Skiro, Pizza Hut, um, you got Coffee, you got Raven Sniping, you got Anna, you got Master Kenneth, uh, you got Gene available, you got Quirks available. Um, again, just a, not quite a hundred percent guaranteed what their six is going to be, but a pretty good six either way. And then on the no go side of things, pretty similar story, but it seems to be a little more consistent now. Blue Revolver has been playing consistently. Kush as well. Schmaltz as well. Deidro and Nicholson as well. Uh, the last spot, it seems to be a little back and forth between Spoon and Ryan. But, you know, that's, that's a good situation for them either way, right? Um, obviously, on Lennon, heavy's important. Um, and you got some good heavies here on the no-go side of things. Going to be a, a big, big task for Skiro and Coffee in apartments. Um, you know, that's really... It's the most important part of Lenin, period. Straight down the center of the map, uh, you know, able to look over both the double caps. Uh, your heavies need to be strong. You pretty much will never see a game on Lenin where a team will win if their heavies are not pretty easily controlling apartments. You know, if apartments is, is evenly contested back and forth, 
Uh, then a lot of other things come into play. But if you're controlling apartments, you're pretty much most of the time going to win the game. Uh, because it's just so much easier to to cause chaos on both the double caps when you're the team in control of that area. Uh, and it makes it pretty much impossible to feel comfortable on well if you've got bars constantly in blue room and in double windows shooting you in the side and in the back when you're an Axis player with a car, or if you're on Allies, you know, you're already dealing with cars, and then you got uh, a heavy peeking double windows trying to STG snipe you as well. On Long, you got heavies up your ass when you're trying to go out and cap as Allies. It's just, Apartments is very important, right? Schmaltz and Ryan, or Schmaltz and Greg, whatever the heavy team is there, no-go are in good shape, right? Uh, you know, the well team back and forth, pretty even, uh, same on the long side, maybe from the expired side, you can see, you know, Raven on the sniper rifle, kind of, once they have long, going in and supporting apartments, either way, to try to even things out on the apartment side of things, uh, I think that could be helpful, and I'm sure something that he's already considered, um, uh, but you gotta pick no-go, right, and I'm really sorry, if if this is my fault, if anything goes wrong again. Uh, but I think this will be a close game either way, regardless. Um, I really, really like the makeup of Expired. I think that team uh, has been great so far, regardless of the wins and losses. Every game out of them has been exciting and fun to watch and back and forth. So uh, I think that'll be a really, really fun game that I won't get to cast because both, both Armory and Lennon Match of the Weeks are happening at the same time as Expired's games. But... Uh, I think that'll be a, a fun game overall, but no-go. you got to take no-go. And, and I hope that this isn't my fault if anything goes wrong. Um, all right. Then you got SEC versus the Wicked's. So, for the Wicked's, uh, Manga didn't play last week. And, I mean, he is, I feel like, a pretty important part of the lineup. When he's in there, it always seems just like they, they're stepped up uh, another tier, really. Um, so, I mean, I, if I'm going based on last week's lineup, it was Fusa, Man, Zaps, uh, Ryan, Jiraiya, and AZ. Um, maybe Manga gets in there, maybe not, we'll see. Uh, certainly, it's Lennon, so it's kind of like, you know, with Man being stuck on long, takes him out of the equation a little bit more, uh, which is always unfortunate, right? But on the SEC side, a uh, little bit less certain on who their starting six will be. It could be any Insight, Trance, Corey, Hip, Kellen, Pib, Caleb, Tony. Um, any six of those guys could be in the lineup at any given point in time. Uh, obviously, because it's Lennon, Pibian a little bit less in the equation here. Um, but, like, it's the same thing for Mand, right? Like, they're just going to be stuck shooting at each other on long the whole game. So it's kind of like whatever there. It's a wash. Uh, more importantly, though... Tony and Kellen on the heavies, right? This is a very, very strong heavy team uh, on Lennon. You, you, it's, it's, that's all that really needs to be said right there is how strong a heavy team Nine and Riv are. They're both excellent at this map. Uh, that alone really favors SEC. Um, you got to take SEC in most matchups anyways. They look like one of the elite of the elite in silver, but on Lennon with nine and Riv in apartments, like, you're going to take them in a lot of other matchups as well. Like, you know, no pussy in Clan X matchups. I might take them in one out of those two games as well, just because of how strong their heavy team is going to be in apartments. But then you also throw in, like, the well side of things, whether it's Corey and Trance, or Corey and Insight, or Corey and Caleb, or Corey and Hip. If you got Corey in there, he's going to get a bunch of kills on this map going well, I guarantee it. Um, so yeah, like you gotta favor them again on another portion of the map. So yeah, you gotta go with SEC here. Uh, you just gotta. And then, a DoD team versus on-time arrivals. This is a, a very interesting game. This is almost like the second match of the week, if you ask me. So, for a DoD team, uh, last week you had Mike, Purdy, Nick, uh, and then G, Quarter, and Crod. Heavy-wise, right? Crod and G, very, very interesting there. Um, and then on-time arrivals, ooh. 
I've been streaming the wrong screen this whole time. I am so sorry. God damn it, idiot, fuck. Idiot, idiot, idiot. I just, it just occurred to me. I was like, wait a second. I don't think I ever, f god damn it, man. This is what happens when I try to do this thing when I first wake up in the morning. It's just pure idiocy. Just pure dumbassery. Uh, okay. Okay. Stupid. Um, I have the exact lineup out there. One moment. One moment. So, Ian Galasso, longtime friend of the show, uh, is on the sniper. Ben and Bobby on the main rifles. A Zilla on the third rifle. Love to see uh, the big Alaska teammate of mine from winning that uh, Memorial Day draft, I think it was. Big ups, big Alaska. Uh, and then Pro Star and Epion on the heavies. Uh, and it looks like Nightmares is going to be back soon, so watch out for that shit, Silver Division. Because that's another really strong player being available for on-time arrivals. Uh, so, um, you know, Ian been one of the strongest players for on-time arrivals so far this season. This map kind of segments off the snipers, takes away a big chunk of their impact. That's a little bit unfortunate for on-time arrivals. Um, uh, with him and Azilla over there on long... You know, they, I would favor that matchup for them, um, but how much does that really result in impact? It's, you gotta, you gotta get creative to find impact really on this map as long, like you have this set amount of impact, it's like, you know, maybe 20%. So if you're controlling long the whole time, you're making it about 20% of a win on that half, but uh, to really like pump that up to make it closer to what the well and apartments control is, you got to get creative, and it's really tough to find a way to do that. Uh, not a lot of people are great at it. Uh, I think J-Rod is, is probably one of, if not the best I've seen at finding value as a long player because he's just so ridiculously aggressive that long is almost like the long capping is secondary to him, right? Um, and that might be an answer for how people need to be able to play to find more value as a long player um it's just going balls to the wall aggression you know i'm pushing through to the one i'm pushing through to apartments i'm making life a living hell for the other routes at the cost of my life um on the apartment side of things right you got cody and epion up against crawd and g um this is a, a tough matchup to pick right Crawd has been a fucking world beater, uh, and he is really the X factor here. Uh, it, if Cody and Epion can't at least keep him somewhat on a leash, you know, like under 70 kills, then it's going to be very difficult for on-time arrivals to overcome that, especially because Crawd is so aggressive. Like, he's not going to be getting... 70 kills and doing so by never leaving the mid cap right he's going to be pushing to your last flag straight forward and killing all of you on the way so big key there big key there is on time arrivals being able to keep crawled under wraps which good luck right it's easier said than done um you kind of need to theory craft and figure out a way to do that and then you hope that things go the way that you're expecting them to go uh, cause sometimes, you know, good players are just going to have an on day and it's not going to matter what your game plan is. You're going to need to be having the same level of an on day, or you're going to lose the battle over and over again. Um, you know, I think that that right there really is kind of like where this, this game gets made or broken winner wise is the heavy battle in apartments and crawd in particular. Um, but then on well, right, it's it's more interesting matchups, uh, potentially Gandhi and Purdy um, up against Ben and Bobby. That's a fun, fun well matchup right there. You certainly could have well being like dominated by one team or the other could also make up for any problems in apartments, right? Uh, it, it can at least help uh, just to navigate those problems a little bit easier when you are able to kind of eliminate that one area when you're trying to retake apartments. Like, we have well locked down. You're running into Blue Room as an axis. You're not having to get naded on top of being shot by a bar in Blue Room or getting shot by a Garand on top of a bar and getting naded from apartments. Um, so, you know, like, that's kind of, I guess, plan B 
is if you're not getting apartments, you need to have well. You need to have well. Uh, if you're back and forth on well and your apartments team is getting dominated, then you're losing. Um, but if you're if you're back and forth in apartments and your well team is getting dominated, you know it, it's still a little bit. It's negotiable at that point still. Um, there's, there's ways to navigate that scenario a little bit easier. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know. It really does so big time come down to apartments. Um, God damn, this is, this is going to be a, a close game. I think very close game. Let's do a coin flip because this worked out so well last time. Uh, heads for a DOD team and ass uh, an on-time arrivals. It's heads. Uh, going with a DoD team then, because it's a coin flip, and I just flipped what is a clear substitute for a coin. Um, but this game could go either way, really. It's going to just come down to who's having a good day in those areas, I think. Or if one of the two teams can figure out uh, a way to get more value out of their long team, right? If your long team can be the great equalizer in the apartments battle... It's so like even you're losing the apartments battle head to head heavy wise, but what your long Garand or long Stas or your sniper is able to get in there and consistently be killing one or both of the apartments players to clear that route up and get a lane for your heavies to get back into apartments or maybe push a car through that way to take some of those battles at swing. Um, you know, that's that's it's just such a toss up of a matchup, man. It's going to be a good game. And I definitely get to cast that one because it's at 10 Eastern on Sunday night. So my match will definitely be done by that point. All right. And then it's on to the match of the week. Of course, uh, this is a big one. Clan X and no pussy. We are casting this one. It is happening at. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Four, four Eastern. Uh, no Pussy plays their Armory match versus SEC at three Eastern, which is the previous week's match of the week. Whew, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Uh, he, it could be a battle of undefeated teams. It could be, but No Pussy's got a very, very tough task first to even get to the point where it will be still two undefeated teams. Thing is, hypothetically, this could get even more interesting, right? You could have... Um, you could have SEC beat No Pussy on Armory, and then have No Pussy beat Clan X on Lennon, and then what are you looking at here, standings-wise? Then you're looking at 4-1, and 4-1, one, 4-1, and 4-1. One, and one, and one. You're looking at a four-way tie in first place. If you're Team Chaos, that's what you're looking at. That's what you want. Um, for Clan X, Bud... Uh, and Matt on the heavies, ridiculous heavy team. Soya on the sniper, uh, Nitrox, Rafinha, and Lobaton on the rifles. This is generally their starting six. Uh, on the no pussy side of things, a little bit less ironclad. Scotty probably on a rifle. Um, you could see Secretly on a rifle. You could see Bromley. You could see Louie. You know, like those four guys are generally... And then King Yo is almost always on a third rifle. Uh, Toki on a sniper, and then Manor and Yanni on heavies. Um, you know, as alluded to, that heavy in apartment battle absolutely reigns supreme. Um, Bud and Matt up against Yanni and Manor is a very, very fun heavy matchup. You know, statistically, let me pull it up. What do you got here? Manor technically at the top right now. Um, Bud right here. And JN right here. You know, like, very strong heavies. Matt, where's Matt at? Am I blind? Huh? Has Matt... Oh, he's right there. Okay. I was looking for M-A-T, but it's Mattson. Okay, Whew. Uh, 1.14 KD ratio, though. You know, obviously KTP rating 1.01, but it's that's more about because the flags are taken into such account. Like sometimes the routes and the play style is is more important than necessarily exactly how strong of a performance you're having. We don't have enough stats available in DoD to really put forth like a wins above replacement kind of stat, right? I wish we did. Um, but KTP rating is the closest thing we've got. So, you know, it's inherently flawed, but 
regardless, point being, it's a very even heavy matchup. You've got four very highly rated and highly regarded heavies going head to head against each other in apartments. Um, the long teams are pretty interesting as well. Toki and Kingyo. And Kingyo and those nades, man, are a lot to deal with. Um, but then, is it Nitrox or Lobaton going long? Not sure. You know, both those guys have thirded at different times. I'm going to assume it's Lobaton. Um, Lobaton and Soya are fucking a tough long team, man. Lobaton is multi-kill potential, just domination uh, when he's going strong. Uh, and then on well, right, Rafinha. Rafinha, I think, is, you, you could make the argument for him, you know, along with, like, Crod and Riv, uh, in the season in particular, uh, as, as the player of silver, right? Rafinha capable of just dropping 100 on you any given time. Maybe no pussy can get secretly in there. Have a real, like, I mean, if you had a Hall of Fame of silver throughout KTP's run, Rafinha and secretly would probably both be in there. Um... You know, they're, they're just such ridiculous players. It's always, they're the kind of players that it's just always fun to watch them because they're going to do something crazy and they're going to put up big, big numbers. Uh, you know, potentially Adam over there as well, another guy who's very explosive, very capable of just, you know, killing your entire team at a moment's notice. Uh, or, say, you know, Louis, same kind of thing. Scotty, same kind of thing. Like, a lot of multi-frag potential on that route between both teams, Rafinha, Nitrox, uh, and then whatever the rifle team ends up being for no pussy. Um, mm, you know, man, I, it's like what I want, what I want to happen is that scenario that we just talked about. That's what I want to happen. Just regard, you know, as a fan of DOD, cause first and foremost, I am a fan of DOD. And as a caster, like I follow this shit more closely than any person in the right mind should. And I think for the potential storylines that can come out of it, I really, really want a four-way tie at the top of silver here. Thing is, I, I'm not so sure about that actually happening, if I'm being honest with you. Um, you know, Clan X can against Expired on Armory. So, like, I feel like Clan X is probably going to win on Lennon here. Uh, it's going to be close. And, and here's the thing. No pussy have found really fucking effective ways to play against certain teams on certain maps. We've seen it time and time again where they can really, really push the limits of what you're going to be able to expect out of them. Just like, oh, this is this map and this team, so this is what they're going to do. They find ways to, to find a better way of doing things on the fly, in the moment, in tough spots. So... I mean, this game could go either way. I just, I mean, I played against Clan X in a scrim on Lennon, and they're very tough on this map. Um, I'm sure No Pussy has been scrimming as well. But I, it's it's a coin flip, at, and I, if I had gun to my head, I think Clan X is the best team in silver, period, right now. But what I'm going to say I want to happen, and hope I can will it into existence, is to have SEC beat No Pussy on Armory, and then have Clan X, or then have No Pussy beat Clan X on Lennon, and have it be, wait, ha, uh, this is week five, right? Yeah, so they would all be four and one. Okay, that's what I want. I want four and one, four and one, four and one, four and one. Wait, what? Did, three and one right now. How the fuck? What am I missing here? They, SEC has won two games. To, oh, they're in, it's week six. It's week six. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I, I was saying four and one, I mean five and one. Five and one, five and one, five and one, five and one. So SEC would also have to win their Lennon game, but I'm pretty sure they will. Uh, so yeah, five and one is the idea here. And then red shirts have to win their Lennon game as well, which I also predicted they would. So it's a lot of things to have happen, but that's, I, you know, again, coin flip, I can coin flip all I want. I can say this and this and that, but what I really want to happen for the sake of the storylines, the casting, the dot cast, the, the lulls, the memes, the gifs, the ha ha ha, hoo hoo hoo. Uh, I want to see SEC 
take the win on Armory against No Pussy. And then No Pussy take the win on Lennon against Clan X. Red Shirts win their Lennon game. SEC win their Lennon game. And have this be just the craziest scenario here at the top of Silver, where you have no idea what's going on even after halfway, over halfway through the season. That's what I want. Give that to us, please. Please, everybody involved here. All right. On to the gold predictions. The Where are we at? Oy vey. Okay. It's not even that much shorter, but I'm going to keep... It's going to be shorter than normal. Um, so, going to do my match first. Uh, 3H versus Clinic. For the 3H side of things, uh, it looks like, as of right now, it looks like this week's lineup is Defrag, CK, me, Brandon, Gull, Austin. Um, obviously subject to change based on who knows what the fuck happens. You never know with 3H what could happen, but that looks to be the potential lineup so far. And then on the clinic side of things, um, you know, you've got the main clinic six, right? Tom, Sam, Scott, Insom, Vic, and Carp. But you could see any of these three guys get in there, in particular Taylor and Debo. Um, yeah, very, wait, Hopper is on Icy Hot now. Why did I think Hopper was on clinic? Am I tripping? Do they add him to the roster just for the ringing? Or I'm so confused. I would have sworn that Hopper was on clinic, but I'm a fucking idiot now, apparently. So just ignore the fact that that's what I thought was going on earlier. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, clinic obviously really, really trying to get back on their winning ways after a tough loss on Armory. They beat us earlier in the season on Harrington pretty convincingly. Um, this is a map that, you know, it's it's a favorable map for Clinic, period. Um, and especially with the fact that 3H doesn't really have, like, we have Modgers as a heavy, right? No one else is a natural heavy here. Certainly not in the lineup for this week, right? If, we, if you have Frank playing, then you have, I mean, he's technically a, a natural rifle, but Frank is a natural fucking beast. You know, that's just, that's all that you need to define what Frank is a natural at everything. Um, but we don't have that, uh, as of right now, at least. It would be really nice if that ended up changing. But, you know, Modgers is our only natural heavy, and he is not going to be there this week, as far as I know. Um, so, you know, probably got a favor clinic due to that, just from everything else I've been saying throughout this podcast. But, it's Lennon, crazy things happen. CK is on 3H, so he could end up with 108 kills. You know, Andrew historically has had some huge games on Lennon. Austin, one of those guys who's always been able to find good value sniping on Lennon. You know, maybe there's a way back into it if you're 3H. Um, but Clinic, they are a very, very tough team to deal with, especially on maps like this, where they're able to very quickly and freely rotate about the map based upon what one another are doing and where the holes are present at any given point in time um so just gonna you gotta favor them just saying uh all right on to the next one all right so over icy hot the clear match of the week right i don't think that's really up for debate um where is the other game there dice versus here to frag uh so for here to frag they're a little bit of a rotating six, right? Like Arachnid has sniped a couple weeks, Stamp has sniped a couple other weeks, the Bear could snipe at any given point in time. Uh, generally, you've seen Justin on a rifle, Mike on a rifle, the Bear on the third, uh, Blackhawk is thirded sometimes, and heavied sometimes. He had a really, really great start uh, on the heavy on Armory last week against Icy Hot. Um, if Piff plays, he's likely to heavy. I don't I think he's only played once so far this season, which is unfortunate because he's a great heavy. Um, Stark as well, great heavy. Ryan, not likely to play, right? But you never know. He did play on Solitude. Um, and then Jared, I mean, you could have him pretty much play anything as well. You could you'll probably have him slot into whatever class is open at that point. And then on the dice side, you got Matt and Asani on the rifles. You got Alex on the third. Uh, you got Paul and DB on the heavies, and you got Kevin on the sniper. Um, that's basically for sure what the starting six is. It's pretty much, be I think it's been that every single match. Like, that exact six in those exact spots in the lineup. Um, 
you know, this map for a team like here to frag, you at least are, you have more of a shot, right? Because your big time mechanical fragging skill uh, has the chance to, to come to the forefront and be more important here. Um, certainly with the well team of PB and Illusion, right? They need to have a pretty dominant lockdown on well. Like if these two guys are having themselves like one of, you know, their ceiling kind of games where they're both putting up like 40 kills a half, this is a big way back in. But then on top of that, you're going to need your heavies to have at least like a 50-50 game with Paul and Ryan. They, Paul and Ryan are looking like the best heavy duo in, in gold right now. Like they've been unstoppable. Um, you know, like you got those two and then you got Jesse and uh, and Mitch. Uh, and then on over, Caffrey and SC, um, you know, all right, so there's only like six teams in gold, and I just listed fucking half of them, right? But you know what I'm saying, like, those are the, the big dogs in the heavy yard right now. All the more impressive by the fact that when you think of Ryan, you think of a sniper, and in recent years, at least in the KTP era of DOD, DOD, same thing for Paul, although Paul, you know, he was like a rifle, you know, originally, in like 2003, four stuff like that. Like I would have said Paul's a rifle, and then I would have said he was a heavy. Him sniping, I think, came about later on. So like a lot of people might be surprised seeing Paul being good at something other than sniping. But the sniping thing, in my mind at least, like when I think of Paul, the DoD player, I, it wasn't as a sniper. It was always as a rifle or as a heavy. So I'm not that surprised at all, to be honest with you. Like this is him getting to play a, the more natural classes for him. Um, you know, I, I want to say that him sniping has just always been kind of like uh, an as needed basis. Like he's just trying to fill in what the team needs most. Right. Um, just being a team player. And now it's getting the chance to go out there and like play classes that he has a lot more playing time on. Um, and I would argue probably more comfortable at, and the performance backs that up, right? Like this is, he's putting up big numbers week in and week out. Uh, but in the KTP era, been a sniper, like probably 75 to 80 percent of the matches he's played up until this season so still very impressive to have two predominantly snipers in recent years stepping out of the heavy class and immediately being able to be considered one of the elite of the elite heavy duos in the game um so here to frag need need to have an answer in apartments there which is again easier said than done um on the long side of things, if it's Stamp, if it's Arachnid, if it's the Bear on the Sniper Rifle, up against Stealth, this has always been a map that Kevin uh, may be the best at, right? Like Kevin or Austin or Justin. Um, you know, those would be kind of like the big three uh, Lennon Snipers. Nick, Nick has like huge games on Lennon sometimes as well. But I think Nick hates sniping Lennon like I do. So it's like a lot of the time you're just kind of like fucking going through the motions. Because especially on these new versions of Lennon, you're so much more limited on the impact you can have as a sniper. Because of the added spawn at Axis side and the way the angles work out. Uh, you don't, you can't really push into L and do the, like, your crouch behind the box looking at the window, and then you pop up to look at the only spawn exit they're coming out of, so you're pretty well protected, they have to come around the corner to nade you, um, and then if you're on long steps, they really, like, they almost can't nade you very effectively without peeking you as well, uh, pushing up as an allied sniper used to be, that it was so much fun. If you didn't get to do whatever, let me tell you, you missed out. If you only know of sniping on this Lennon, uh, you missed out, man. Because used to be, like, I looked forward to Lennon sniper games. For getting pushed up to L and stairs on allies, and getting pushed up to my spot on Axis and swing door. You know, that that's changed too, though. Uh, the way that everything got moved around in upper apartments, the angles, the height, and then the... The angle looking out of apartments into birdcage and the allied spawn exit also changed. So now not very favorable for a sniper to go there. You're just getting shot from like a little pixel peak in the birdcage. Um, or you're getting naded off the spawn ramp. So snipers, there's just not a lot to be done here. But Kevin will find a way to get his at least 50 kills overall. Which is a lot for a sniper on this map in this day and age. Um, unless you're DB. Because Ryan has been the one guy in the, last, in the six seasons of KTP that I've seen have really, really great Axis side sniper halves on Lennon. Where, like, he's finding 35 kills with an Axis sniper somehow. Don't know how. 
Um, point being, though, dice, right? You got to pick dice, 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 dice. Uh, it's just here to frag has an in here. They just need to have big, big, strong performances out of everybody, along with a little bit of help from, like, DICE having an off game. Uh, it's just, they, DICE looks insane. They look so good right now, not just individually, but as a team, as a unit. Um, they are putting in the time, uh, and, and they have figured shit out really, really well as a team all around. Uh, the, the pieces are, you know, adding up the pieces individually already, top of the top. Uh, but then when you put together that whole team, that unit, even that is, e it's even more strong than those individual pieces put together, which is already fucking insane. Um, but yeah, for here to frag, well, and apartments, right? Like if you can find a way to at least make apartments a 50-50 and you can dominate well, that's, that's the way back in. Um, but again, easier said than done, man. So much easier said than done. And then for the gold match of the week. And the final piece of the puzzle. I got five minutes to get this thing under an hour and a half. It's over versus Icy Hot. For Icy Hot, Jesse and Mitch on the heavies. Ben on the sniper. Justin on a third. Sean and William on the rifles. And for over, a little bit less certain. But more than likely, SC and Caffrey on the heavies. Nick on a sniper. Devin on a third. Or a car. Either way, either way right? Kum Kum, Saka, Mata, all capable of being on a rifle, as well as Nightmare, or maybe he snipes, or maybe he heavies. The guy can play anything. Um, he can play anything. This matchup, this is, I think, the best opportunity, map-wise, for over to beat Icy Hot. They are strong on this map. I would argue this is their best map, probably their favorite map as well. Um, Going to be very, very fun game to watch and get to cast. Thank you. Thank God. Uh, you know, that heavy matchup, toss-up. Toss-up. Uh, Caffrey and SC, already elite heavies, but in particular on this map, a lot to deal with. Mitch and Jesse going to have to be on their shit here uh, and ready for a fucking just clash, a clash in apartments because Caffrey and SC will come, and they will come hard. Um on long, Ben and Nick up against each other, and then, you know, potentially Devin and Justin. Uh, you basically got four elite snipers on long right now. So, good luck when you kill one of them. It's just, oh, I killed Hildebrand. Now Justin Lynch has a sniper. Oh, I killed Nick Patton. Now Devin has a sniper. Great. Uh, and then on well, obviously William and Sean, two of the absolute best there is, uh, up against Kum Kum and Saka, a stalwart of the gold division as a rifle team. Uh, I think that might be where the game gets make, make, uh, made or broken here, to be honest. Um, it might come down to who is more effective on well. Because I think the other two routes are enough of a toss-up that it will be very back and forth, back and forth in the chaos. Uh, it might come down to well and which team is able to more effectively and consistently be in control of well. Um, you gotta favor Icy Hot, you gotta favor Sean and Sick in that battle, but we've seen it out of Kum Kum and Saka. On this map in particular, they are very strong and have a very good acute understanding of how best to work out each, every individual scenario on well together. Um, they find holes, they find seams, and all of a sudden when you think like you're pushing on them for a cap out, it's like, oh wait, Saka or Kum Kum actually snuck through you on well and just killed four out of six on a spawn wave and now they've got well and now they've got long and now they've got apartments so you gotta favor icy out right you can't pick against icy out until you see that they're capable of losing you just can't um but i think this is potentially the best shot for icy out to lose in the regular season right here uh it's got to be either this or anzio against dice um i still i don't see them losing uh, at all, uh, regular season or playoffs, but this just might be like the closest thing there is to a, a week where you can you can pick against Icy Hot and not feel like a total fucking idiot, right? Because Over is excellent at this map, just so good individually and as a team all around. They thrive in the chaos of this map, whereas Icy Hot is a lot more regimented. Um, they're gonna do things flawlessly the way that you should do them. Sometimes on Lennon, things don't happen the way they should, though, right? 
Uh, so I see not going to be challenged in that regard, where they're, they're going to have to find a way to thrive in the chaos to keep track of players. You can't lose track of any of these guys because they're probably going to be off their route when you think you know where they're at. Um, they need to be prepared for that because we saw it in the playoffs with over on Lennon last season. You, you just lose track of these guys, and then they're, they're killing three or four of you out of nowhere. Uh, and, and that's where they have the opportunity to take this game is just in the chaos thriving in the madness that is a map like Lennon where you think, oh, well, we just killed, you know, these three guys here. So this route is done. Oh, wait, there's a fourth and a fifth there. Things like that are going to happen. And I see that needs to be prepared for it, which they will. I assure you they will. These guys do not take any match lightly. They are well practiced. Um, and very well prepared. There's plenty of demos of overplaying on Lennon as well that I'm sure they could have seen Cass, things like that. These are not new facts to Iciat, I assure you. Uh, it's just going to come down to who's hitting the shots on the day in this matchup. That, that's really what this game is going to come down to. Who, out of the 12 players, which one of the two teams has more players having an on day or less players having an off day? Uh, but you got to pick Iciat. You just can't pick against them. They are... Uh, an elite of the elite DOD teams right now. Um, you know, they look poised to to potentially have the second wire-to-wire uh, -wire perfect season in gold. And until that is in jeopardy, you can't pick against them. I'm not gonna. No chance. Um, and yeah, that does it. I didn't I didn't get under an hour and a half. Because I took... Oh, right on... No! It just switched to an hour 31. God damn it. Uh, if Quirks, I believe, is making the Frag of the Week for Armory, maybe because of the way things worked out, he can combine Armory and Lennon if he's still doing it, or if anyone's doing it. Uh, I still can't do it, thanks to the Thunder movie part two, part three of two of nine. Uh, but, you know, if I finish that ever, I'll do one. Maybe if I can finish it before the playoffs, I'll do just like an overall playoff Frag of the Week uh, kind of thing. I don't know. We'll see. I, I make these kinds of statements, but then, like, I'll not work on the Thunder movie for a week at a time. So, And if I'm not in Buffalo, I can't work on it at all. So these are the things that come into play. But uh, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 9.30, and 10 on Sunday at bare minimum. That's five casts that we get to do. Well, like four and a half, I guess, because I got to play at 9. Um, maybe there's another game in there, too, that I'll be able to hop on. I don't know, but... Lots of big matches. 3, 4, and 5 is all match of the weeks. Armory match of the week in silver. Lennon match of the week in silver. And Lennon match of the week in gold. Be there or be square. Is there something wrong with being square? You know, is this anti-square rhetoric we're hearing about? Anyways, KTP, peace out, guys. And yeah, submit to the frag of the week if Quirks is making it. If he's not making it, submit to whoever is making it. Just submit to the frag of the week. That's not so hard to ask. Love you guys.